Beverly Beesmeyer, Kathleen Ann Hilbrand, Nadine Nagel, Shirley Cruz, Bernice Haydu, Elise Rohr, Nell Bright. Didn't you ever stand on the side of a, a hill or a mountain and look down on the birds circling out over the valley and wish that you could just spread your arms and fly with them? I always did. I was uh, taking my flying lessons in Amarillo, Texas, and I was out, uh, sitting at the airport waiting uh, to fly one afternoon, and I just picked up a flying magazine, and, and there was an article in there that, that they were beginning to train women pilots in, in the military. If the, you had an interest, they listed an address to write to in Fort Worth, Texas for an interview, which I did. And I got an answer right back to come to Fort Worth for an interview, so I was interviewed by Jackie Cochran. Now this was an experimental program, so we had to pay our own way from New Jersey to Sweetwater, Texas, where we were being trained. We had to pay our own way. If you washed out, you paid your own way home. Uh, when we were disbanded, we had to pay our own way home because we were classified civil service and we were paid $150 a month while in training. But out of that, we had to pay our room and board and any incidentals like our dress uniforms when we were in training. So we weren't actually making a lot of money, but, but we didn't care because we were flying bigger airplanes than we did as a civilian. It was a difficult time for us because in the 1940s, if I remember correctly, there were only about three jobs that a, a woman could take, and that was a nurse or a school teacher or a clerk in an office, a secretary. And anyone that stepped out of line and did anything different was questioned and looked down upon. And so, in general, people were very unfriendly to us, and I know that most of those people were women. The women would say, why does she want to go in the Air Force, for heaven's sake, just chasing all those men? That was the attitude. And we just had to put up with it. We weren't in there because men were there. We were there because we wanted to fly airplanes. Oh, well, we all got comments, and, and we would go into places uh, in our uniforms, and they thought we were stewardesses or something. And, no, and lots of times, people wouldn't even believe we were pilots for the Air Force, you know. We towed targets. We did, uh, in the B-25 and B-26, we did strafing missions of the boys when they would go on uh, out in the desert on uh, uh, learning how to hit the dirt when we would strafe them. <laughs> we didn't do real bullets, of course, but we would go right over the top of their heads. And we did that in P-47, and the two Navy hell divers, the A-24 and the A-25, the Curtis and the Douglas. And then we did uh, searchlight missions at night in the Twin Engine Beach. So we might fly two or three different types of airplanes in one day, depending on what kind of missions we had. And uh, we had to have our instrument rating to fly the searchlight. This was training the boys at Fort Bliss to catch the planes in the searchlights. So we had to ha have our instrument rating because if they catch you in the searchlights, you can't see a thing and you have to be able to fly completely by instruments while you're in the searchlights because it's just like, you know, like you're socked in. <laughs> One night we were pulling targets in the B-25 and uh, <clears throat> the crew chief had rolled out the target and the, and the boys from Fort Bliss were supposed to get the, get the, um, uh, the target in the searchlights. Well, I don't know what they got in the searchlights, and, and, and fortunately, probably our plane, fortunately they didn't hit it, but the, the flak started uh, coming up in front of the plane, 
So we did some evasive action and told him to roll in the target, or maybe we just told him to cut it and drop it. I don't remember for sure, but anyway. And we called the ground control and told them, you know, we'd come back another time when the, their boys could learn to shoot the back of the plane rather than the front. If you had fear and you were scared, then you should quit flying. No, no we just thought it was a lot of fun. My brother was a crew chief on B-25 over in Sicily. Anyway, he had to come back to El Paso to, to uh, go through what it, the paperwork and everything. So that's where I was stationed. So I got permission from my commanding officer to take him home to Amarillo in a B-25. You know, I thought he'd be thrilled. And, and uh, he said, oh, I can just take the bus. And I said, no, Tommy and I are going to fly you home in the B-25. I have never seen anybody so uncomfortable in my life as my brother getting in that airplane with two women pilots. And he'd been in combat with the guys, you know, and as crew chief on a B-25. So he sat back where the crew chief, in the jump seat where the crew chief sat. So Tommy and I had uh, <clears throat> decided that we would uh, Naturally, we we're going to give him a few thrills. So we would do the Doolittle takeoff. And uh, so we got uh, down and got, got our permission to take off. And of course, when, so we held, both of us held the brakes and ran the engines up full force and turned the brakes loose. And of course, we got off that runway in about 500 feet. And my poor brother was sitting back there white as a sheet. I think he thought he, this was his last day on earth. We, we said, oh, I think we better go Buzz Canyon. Oh no, he says, we don't need to do that. Well, we didn't pay attention. So we got down at one end and it's one of these little Texas town that has one main street through it. And we went right down the main street and every time any, anybody buzzed Canyon, it was, the people in Canyon said, well, it's either that Stevenson girl or that louder girl. So we buzzed Canyon and then just went up like that and then went on to Emerald Air Force Base. Well, you've never seen anybody so glad to get out of an airplane in your life as my brother. And, and he never said one word to us. He just didn't thank us for anything. And then we went <laughs> and never said anything. We went home and spent the night at home, and, and I think he was still in a state of shock or something. And then Tommy and I took the plane back, to, went back to El Paso the next morning. 